Looking at the comparison here, we can see we have four steps, six steps, eight steps, 10 steps, and 12 steps. So clearly you can see the more steps you put into your one 2.2 generations, the better they'll be, right? But it doesn't stop there. We're going to learn a lot about one 2.2 14B today. These examples here are running the high lightning LoRa at 0.5 strength and the low lightning LoRa at strength one. And for me, I really uh, can't get decent quality at four steps. This is, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. But as soon as you kind of reach six steps and this one here, you're actually, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty good. It's decent for six steps, you know? Uh, but the more steps you go up, the better quality you're going to see. Uh, we're going to see even higher steps soon. But um, this 12 step one, we can see even the, the flowers are holding up fairly well here, right? We have a lot of comparisons here. We even have some cool data we're going to look at. Um, so essentially, you're going to learn a lot. We're going to look at this workflow. It's fairly simple. I'm going to teach you how to get started with this. But before we do that, let's learn more about one 2.2, right? Oh, uh, did you hear about the mushroom comedian? He was a fun guy. Now, if we go up some steps and use 10 steps here, for example, we are using Hylora 0, Hylora 0 0.4 and Hylora 1. So why would you want to do that? Well, Essentially, let's move this all out of the way. So a lot of people are have been having issues with the high LoRa, the high lightning LoRa. What is that? Well, that is essentially this, the one 2.2 image to video, four steps, light X2V lightning LoRa. And if you use that, and why do you use that? Well, you use that so you can use lower steps in your one 2.2 generations. And why do you want to use lower steps? Well, it's going to be quicker, right? But if you use this at a high strength, a lot of people are reporting slow motion. So what some people have been doing is they've been lowering the high LoRa and they keep the low LoRa at a high strength. And you can see that here, I mean, tiny bit right in this where the high LoRa is not used it's a fairly quick motion and here where we have a high LoRa of one could be seen as slow motion a little bit this is the same seed so you kind of there is a difference for sure right and if you keep going and look at this one for example the the 15 step one we have no lightning LoRa's at all here we have a low lightning LoRa only, and here we have both high and low lightning LoRa's. And if you don't use any lightning LoRa's, you can actually see in the grass here, while well, this isn't looking great, this is pretty poor. So if you're not using the lightning LoRa's, well, you need to increase the steps. And if you're going, you know, high, it's going to take a lot of time. If you're not using lightning LoRa's, you probably need like 30, 40, 50 steps to start reaching some, some really good stuff, right? But if we look at the grass here, so the middle one here, that's low lighting LoRa only. And then on the right, we have high and low, all at max there. And looking at the grass down here, pretty good for, you know, 15 steps. I mean, this, these are small blades of grass. And here also, I know, fairly decent. It's starting to break up, you know. But something that is noticeable is that when you're not using the high LoRa, this is moving noticeably quicker than the right one. So if you're having issues with the speed, you can decrease the high lightning LoRa. These were all 15 steps. And if we do the same here with 30 steps, we're starting to see some increases in quality, right? Even on the left one here, which has no LoRa's, you're actually starting to see it, it's still breaking apart. So if you'd increase this to 40, 50 steps, it's, it's going to be much better. But you're starting to see that it can kind of differentiate between the blades of, of grass. And in these examples here, boy, it's looking honestly pretty good, right? Now, what is this high and low we're all talking about? Well, essentially, 
in Wallen 2.2, we're having two models. So we're running kind of two steps in the denoising process. So we have a high noise model, and then with them transferring to the low noise model. And just to put that simply is when we're loading our models here, we have a high model and a low model. Now these are fairly beefy, so I'm using the FP8 ones, but they're still like 14 gigabytes each. If you feel that that's too much for you, you have optional GGUFs and, and you can load them in um, a GGUF loader. You have the links for that in the workflow and in the description. For the one 2.2 FP8 ones, well, those you can find in the manager. If you're going to manager, press here, you can just one 2.2 B, well, it's just to fit FP8. So here we have image to video, high low, and text to video, how high low. For this workflow, we're doing image to video, right? The clip and the VE you should have from previous workflows, but do note for 1.2.2.14 B, we are using the 1.2.1 VAE, not the 2.2. That's only for the 5V model. I'm going to put the link to the clip in the description too. We are using Sage Attention. So if you don't have that installed, if you're getting errors about Sage Attention, set them to disable actually. So easiest is to just press disable there. And if you want to change the strength of your LoRa's, well, that's here. So this is the high LoRa and these are the, the this is the strength value that we've been changing in the, the examples over here, right? Oh, we have a car that we're going to look at in a bit and some cool graphs. In this workflow, you are loading an image. In this case, we have this woman here that we saw from the example. We're setting the amount of steps. The more steps, the longer you're going to take, it's going to take. And for the frames, well, it's set here and this is going to be auto adjusted. Now we set 50 here, but it's probably going to be like 53 or something once it's been set, uh, sent into the case sampler. Your image is being resized automatically so you don't have to worry about that if you want to lower the size well you can change the width and the height here the higher the resolution obviously the longer it's going to take we i'm just having an easy prompt here woman walking in nature if you want to pad it to make it more advanced you can do that too fairly easy just slap that in the negative prompt i'm leaving as is this is just basically mandarin for you know uh, low resolution blurry bad quality stuff like that i also put in slow and slow motion because why not now another cool thing so i was contemplating should i use the sampler or not and i decided i'm going to so a lot of people are using 2k samplers one for each of the high and the low mode right but there is one sampler that has both of them like this and the cool part about this is they're doing the sigma shift calculation in the sampler. What is that? Okay, stay with me now. When we are swapping from the high noise model to the low noise model, we need to know when. When are we doing that? After how many steps, right? And a lot of people are just doing like 50%. So if we have a generation like this, or well, let's take this one, it's cooler. And it's 20 steps, they just do 10 steps on the high model and 10 steps on the low model. Does that work? It works. Is it correct? Well, that's kind of up for debate a little bit. So if you look at uh, one 2.2's official graphs, you, you have this, which comes from the training, right? So this goes from right to left. So you can see the little arrow here, right? So in the training, they train uh, and they have fairly small segment on the high noise model. And then they have a large chunk of the time on the low noise. And the swap is here, right? So you use the high no noise and then you swap and you use more time on the low noise, right? Does this look like 50% to you? No, right? And there have been some smart dudes on Reddit who made graphs out of these. Now, I do think the step here is, is in reverse, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. 
So let's say, for example, that you're using the sampler Euler simple and you're using four steps. And let's say you're using a shift of five. This is the sigma shift. And that is set in here, sigma shift five. That value should probably be five for image to video. And I think I have that sigma shift here. So text to video, you know, eight to 12, probably 12. Image to video, five to eight, I have five, five here as a recommendation. Now, let's get back to this. So if you have a shift of five, which is recommended for image to video, and you think of this as, as a reverse, reverse one, so if you move from the right here, we have one step high and three steps low. So here's the switch, right? So theoretically, we should use one high, three low instead of 50%, which would be too high, too low, right? Okay. So then you could do and set that manually. Well, you could, but what if you're using, you know, eight steps or 10 steps or 20 steps and you let's say you 20 steps and you have a shift of nine. Well, then you have, okay, you have two steps here. So if you don't want to look at graphs like this and figure out when you're changing the high end and the low model, well, this sampler does it for you. This one here, one more K sampler. It takes all that math, does it for you. And when you're generating, it makes sure to swap the steps at the correct point. So if you're, for example, using Euler simple at eight steps and a shift five, instead of just having 50, 50, it's going to do I think uh, was here in, in, in the middle. So it's going to be either two or three steps on high and then seven steps on low. So you don't have to think about that. It's automatic. But if you do want to do this manually with 2K samplers, you can. And then you have this data here to look at. And the thing is, okay, you look at this and you're like, oh, it's, so it's always low, a lot of uh, uh, low and, and, and a few high. Well, if you change, for example, to Euler bong tangent, four steps, and the shift of, okay, let's do, do five again. Well, then the calculation is different. So now we have two steps high first and then two steps low. So when you're changing sampler and when you're changing scheduler, the math changes. So then you have to change the steps too. And again, you can do this manually with 2K samplers, but why would you? when you can have it done for you with a mod one mode K sampler. So this is a little more advanced, but just bear in mind, maybe it's not best to just have 50% high, 50% low, because it changes. And here's Euler beta 57, 20 steps. And for a shift of five, what well, we can see here that we're about six, steps on the high and almost 14 steps on the low could be 13 and even inside here I mean if you sh sh change your shift to one well okay then it changes here right why am I telling you all this well just so you know so you're not just using 50 50 at random and think it works great all the time you're gonna like in practice you're gonna get some cool results but it might be good to know why you're doing it right let's look at some more examples here. So in this one, we have some cars, 10 steps on all of them. Low LoRa maximum, high LoRa zero, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, and one. Do you notice at in the left one, remember we talked about when the high LoRa is high, we're getting more slow motion. Just look at this kind of smoke here, what just looks like balls of gray stuff but this is moving quick and the more right you go the higher strength you have on your LoRa kind of the more slow motion feel you're getting on this thing I mean it still looks like the car is moving relatively quickly but you can clearly see the difference here right so that's how you can work with the high LoRa and the same here in 20 steps now if we don't have the high LoRa at all I mean, this looks pretty good. It's coming. This looks like almost real smoke coming out of this car, right? And this one, it's barely moving. 
and these two aren't great either, right? So bear that in mind. I would keep the low Laura at maximum strength at all times, and then I would play with the high Laura values, depending on what kind of motion you're looking for. Do you want to have fast motion? Well, you probably want to lower the high Laura. But then sometimes you need to increase the steps a little bit to, to kind of recoup the quality loss. But most of the quality comes from the low Laura and the low model anyway, right? And here's just a different example, kind of doing the same thing. 15 steps of this close up here. Now, I would say that probably these are all looking good. I would say probably the, the left one here is a little janky, but it has more motion than the others. Now, just in, in regard to like what I was saying about the steps here being reversed, like if you don't believe me, if you think I'm wrong, I actually did a, a comparison here. So if you do too high and six low, which is the right one here, right? This is what I believe is correct. If you do it in reverse, like the graphs say, six high and two low, you can see that the quality here is not amazing, right? But just look at this and sure, this is not like the best quality you could ever get, but this is only eight steps and this is much better than the overbaked, oversaturated crap here on this side, right? The graphs go from right to left. And if you say, hey, Seb, no, I'm a machine learning specialist. You're all wrong. Let me know in the comments and I'll learn something, right? I love to learn. Okay, so now you've got a grasp of one 2.2. You just want to run this. Well, sure. Slap an image in, set how many steps you wanted to have, set your number of frames. If you're using a GPU with not as much VRAM as, as the big boys and the big girls, well, you might want to enable block swap, command B or control B. I'm running this on a RTX 1490 and it works well without the block swap. How many steps do I do? Well, it's, it says right here, like six to 10 steps, you have a good baseline, 15 to 25 for maximum quality with the LoRa's. I should probably put in like, if you don't use LoRa's, well, you might want to do like 40 to 50. And honestly, if you don't use the LoRa's, you can get even better quality, but you really have to increase the steps. There's like 50 steps. There's a boundary value in the sampler up here. If you're using image to video, 0 0.9. If you're using text to video, you want to change this to 0 0.8. 7.5, but it's all here, right? I prefer Euler Simpler. A lot of people prefer REST2M, REST2S. Uh, they do bong math with REST to, uh, RESTful lift samplers. Honestly, for me, I didn't... I was diving deep into that, but I didn't find much improvement for me personally. Like, if you did, fine. But just compare like doing Euler Simpler at a higher step than doing a uh, REST 2M or REST 2S with Bong Math at a lower step. It's, it's going to be the kind of the same time when you even them out. So I just found that to be a lot of complexity without a lot of gain. But that's just me. And then you're going to have your uh, beautiful generation and it's going to be saved. So this is one 2.2, 14B. It's a doozy and it's really great. And we looked at some of the comparisons. Well, I think we actually did look at all of them. The summary is more steps is better. Low LoRa at maximum, high LoRa. You might want to decrease it if you uh, want more motion. But uh, yeah, we had some uh, cool math here too. So you probably uh, know more about Wallen 2.214B than you did an hour ago. And remember, we're using the Wallen Mo K sampler to do all this advanced math or simple math, depending on who you ask. You can download this and all the stuff is in the links in the description. As always, have a good one. See ya.